Oh, hey, how you guys doing? You here for a little bit of review? All right, fair enough, just give me a second. One of the most useful tools you'll find in chemistry is the conversion factor. A conversion factor is really easy to spot because when you see a conversion factor, it essentially looks like this, something over something else. Examples of this include metric conversion factors, density, heat of fusion, gram formula mass, the molar volume of a gas, the number of molecules in a mole, the number of kilopascals in an atmosphere, the molarity in moles per liter. Notice what all of these values have in common. They all have an upper unit and a lower unit, 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 an upper unit and a lower unit. Wow, they've got all this amazing stuff in common. You know what that means? That means any math that you do with these numbers is going to be ideal. Identical. Now, what exactly is it that you can do with these conversion factors? Easy! You can use them to convert between different things. We can use this to convert between grams and kilograms, or even kilograms and grams. We can use this to convert between grams and cubic centimeters, or cubic centimeters to grams. We can convert joules to grams, or grams to joules. Grams to moles, or moles to grams. Liters to moles, or moles to liters. Molecules to moles, or moles to molecules. Kilopascals to atmospheres, atmospheres to kilopascals. That one didn't really have the rhythm to it. Moles to liters and liters to moles. That one did. So how exactly do you use these conversion factors to find out the things that you might want to know? Well, a lot of times you're going to try to memorize a formula, like molarity equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution. In fact, You can find a lot of these equations right here on Reference Table T, the New York State Chemistry Reference Tables. If you want to find them, just go online and do a Google search for New York State Chemistry Reference Tables. But there's no need to memorize any of that, because all you have to do is this. Let's suppose we want to convert from one unit to another. Like, let's say our unit is X, and we want to get to Y. What we need is a conversion factor that has both x and y in it. Let's say the conversion factor is x over y. Well, how the heck do we get rid of x and be left with y? Easy. If you multiply, you'll get x squared. So you know you can't do that. But if you divide, x will cancel and leave you with y. So if what you're trying to solve for is in the denominator, divide. Divide for the denominator. Divide for the denominator. Divide for the denominator. Divide for the denominator. Divide. Now let's say we had the same conversion factor, except this time we're trying to convert y into x. Well, what we're going to need is a conversion factor. We'll use the same one, x over y. Well, how do we get rid of y and be left with x? Multiply. y and y will cancel out and leave you with x equals x. So if you want to solve for the numerator, multiply. Numerator, multiply. Numerator, multiply. Numerator, multiply. Numerator, multiply. So let's just take as an example the conversion factor 40.0 grams per mole. This is the gram formula mass of sodium hydroxide. First use of this, let's just suppose that we have 2.00 moles of sodium hydroxide, and we want to find out how many grams that's going to be. We want to get rid of moles, and we want to be left with grams. We're trying to solve for the numerator. Numerator, numerator, multiply, numerator, multiply, numerator, multiply, numerator, multiply, numerator, multiply. Why? Because moles will go bye-bye and leave you with grams. 80.0 of them, in fact, because three sig figs and three sig figs, and you get three sig figs when you're done. Okay? That's how you can use that conversion factor. Now let's suppose that we have grams. Let's say we have 20.0 grams of sodium hydroxide, and we want to find out how many moles that is. 
we want to go from grams to moles. Hey, this will do it really nicely. It's got grams and moles in it. So what do you want to do? You want to solve for the denominator. You want to solve for the denominator. You want to solve for the denominator. Denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. Grams will cancel and leave you with 0 0.500 moles. You don't even have to memorize any equations. If you're trying to solve for the numerator, multiply. If you're trying to solve for the denominator, divide. For the next one, let's do heat of fusion. It takes 334 joules to melt a gram of ice when you're at the melting point. 334 joules per gram. Now let's suppose that we have 10.0 grams of water and we take 334 joules to melt each gram. We want to find out how many joules it's going to take to do the job. You're trying to solve for the numerator. Multiply. You're trying to solve for the numerator. Multiply. Grams will cancel and leave you with 3,340 joules. Now suppose we have 1,000 joules of heat energy and we want to find out how many grams of ice that we can melt with that number of joules. Now we're trying to solve for the denominator. We're trying to solve for the denominator. We're trying to solve for the denominator. What do you do to solve for the denominator? Denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. To divide, we simply take our calculator and we go 1,000 and we divide it by 334 and that gives us, oh, that's a lot of digits. Here, I'll show you. That's a lot, that's a lot of digits. So what do we do? Well, four sig figs, three sig figs, so we knock this at 2.99 grams. And what this tells us is that if we had a thousand joules that we can use for melting ice, and that's how much it costs to melt each gram of ice, that's how many grams we can melt with that many joules. So again, take a look at this. If you want to solve for your numerator, multiply. Solve for the numerator, multiply. If you want to solve for the denominator, divide. If you want to solve for the denominator, divide. You can use the same technique for every conversion factor. You don't have to memorize a single equation. Okay, one more example. The density of aluminum is 2.73 grams per cubic centimeter at room temperature. So what are we going to do? We can use it to convert between grams and cubic centimeters. Now you know the equation. Density equals mass over volume. Well that's fine, but I've found that most people couldn't solve for mass or volume to save their life because they don't know how to do the basic algebra. But with this, you don't have to. If you know the density, it makes everything so much easier. <laughs> Let's suppose we know the volume as being 10.0 cubic centimeters in volume, and we want to get grams. No problem. We're trying to solve for the numerator. We're trying to solve for the numerator. We're trying to solve for the numerator. What do you do to solve for the numerator? Numerator multiply, numerator multiply, numerator multiply, numerator multiply, and we get 27.3 grams. Let's suppose we have 10.0 grams of aluminum and we want to find out how much volume it will occupy. Well, we're trying to solve for cubic centimeters. We're solving for the denominator. What do we do when we solve for the denominator? Denominator, divide, denominator, divide, denominator, divide, denominator, divide, denominator, divide, denominator, divide. Grams go bye-bye. And 10.0 divided by 2.73 Another really huge number. Let's round it off. Three sig figs, three sig figs, 3.66 centimeters cubed. You didn't even need to use that stupid triangle. You didn't need to use density equals mass over volume. You didn't have to do any algebra at all. Why? Because density is just a conversion factor. That's all it is. So you can see for every example where you're trying to solve for the numerator of your conversion factor, Multiply to get rid of the denominator and be left with the numerator. In every single instance where you're trying to solve for the denominator of your conversion factor, divide. Your numerator will cancel and leave you with your denominator, which is what you're trying to figure out. So one more time, if you're trying to find the numerator, multiply. Numerator, multiply. Numerator, multiply. If you're trying to find the denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. Denominator, divide. And you can apply this to every single math problem that involves a number with a unit on top 
and the unit on bottom. You don't need to memorize any math equations at all. It's just pure, basic common sense. You can apply it to every possible circumstance you can imagine. Now go ahead and do it.